Welcome back, friends. I've got some good news for you guys. Grand Force Brooks has um, recently introduced a new axe um, that just may be the one that we've all been waiting for, just may be the perfect axe uh, that has been kind of missing from, well, from anyone's lineup. Uh, let's go back a little bit. It was probably, I'm guessing, in the mid-90s or so uh, when I came across this book at a used bookstore. I bought this, I believe, in Powell's uh, in Portland, Oregon. And it's Campion, Camping and Woodcraft by uh, the author is Kephart. And it is, uh, Mr. Kephart is all known uh, about traditional skills. Of course, I think this was published 1913, 1917, uh, and it reads very different than a lot of the um, survival information and things we see on YouTube right here. Let me give you just one passage here, I think, that, that kind of sums it up perfectly for us and uh, dispels a lot of the internet nonsense that we've all been subject to. And uh, Mr. Kephart writes this regarding hatchets. hatchets. A woodsman should carry a hatchet, and he should be as critical in selecting it as in buying a gun. The notion that a heavy hunting knife can do the work of a hatchet is delusional. When it comes to cleaving carcasses, chopping kindling, blazing thick bark trees, driving tent pegs or trap stakes, and keeping up a bivouac fire, the knife never was made that will compare to a good tomahawk. And I agree. I guess this is where uh, Nut and Fancy and I will certainly part ways. He's been a big advocate of the large hunting survival knife. I've always said that it's compared to an axe, it's a joke and it's marketing nonsense. That's just my opinion. Interesting that he should say camping tomahawk, right? Because if we look at the new uh, Grand Force Brooks and this, they're calling this the outdoor axe. I've actually refrained from, from really looking at this closely. I put it away because I wanted to kind of uh, share my first impressions and that, that whole experience with you guys uh, in real time here. Anyway, Mr. Mr. Kephart uh, says that the most important tool uh, uh, that a man can have when engaging in uh, you know, traditional camp making, bushcrafting, is his rifle. <laughs> that was that was the number one. He's dedicated a whole chapter uh, to just selecting the rifle and another one on marksmanship and all that. And speaking of rifles, there was a lot of question about mine, uh, the Mark 18. If you're interested in, in me covering this in detail, um, building it and putting it together, um, I'll show you how I'll show you where the video is at the end of this uh, that you can go and watch that. Uh, hint, it's not on YouTube. So before we get to the axe, it's important to go through real quickly my collection of Grand Force Brooks uh, axes because it kind of, uh, it will kind of highlight the, 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 missing, the missing link uh, in this collection that I've had and how I think this new one's going to fit it in. These are absolutely, I love Grand Force Brooks axes. I, I'll make the argument that they make the finest axes in the world. I don't care. If you want to have a debate about it, we can set that up, but um, I, I don't care. I've had enough of them. I I think they're the best. Um, this one here is really, it's, it's really charming. This is a, um, a hand hatchet. Um, of course, these all come with uh, the factory sheaths, which are nice sheaths. I, I didn't really dig them at, at first. I thought that they weren't enough, but they, they've lasted and they're really well put together. They're nothing flashy. They're definitely a working man sheath. They're just a tool sheath, but they have um, vegetable tan leather. They have uh, copper or brass. I've seen them copper or brass uh, snaps. These are all copper. Uh, you can so you when you put your blade in there, they don't um, you don't mar the surface because the copper is copper is soft. They're very usable, and and I think that they're quite actually I think that they're quite good. Look at that. This is <laughs> this is one of the most. This is in the probably in the top ten of the things that I enjoy of my all my tools that I enjoy above all others. Uh, the small hand hatchet. I mean, it's just <laughs> it speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's uh, small enough to put in a pack. Um, it's got it carries enough weight in the head where you can. You know, Brian summed it up yesterday. He said, "I love this hatchet." Uh, for splitting kindling. Whenever he's splitting kindling, he's always looking for this one, uh, and I agree. Uh, the shape, the design, this, the size of it is just excellent for those small jobs. It almost takes the place of a knife in, in many applications because you can choke up on it and you can work and do detailed things with it. Where it is lacking is it doesn't have enough handle on it to get a good, you know, you're not going to be cutting down any trees with this anytime soon. Uh, so that is kind of a se severe a limitation. Uh, we'll, we'll say that. So the next, of course, to my line, and the one that I have used the most, this one I've had for nearly, oh, nearly 20 years now, uh, is the uh, small forest axe. Uh, I mean, this 
is probably, if you could only have one, is probably the finest, one of the finest axes uh, in their whole collection and the most usable. It's um, long enough where you can get two hands on it. You can take down pretty good sized trees. It's short enough where you can choke up on it and light enough you can do detailed work. It has a very a thin taper in the front so it bites incredibly well. It's fat at the eye so it's a decent splitter. Um, not the best, but, and the handle, it just everything about it, it's almost just axe perfection, the small forest axe. I, I mean, it's my go-to axe. This is the one, I even take it wildland in firefighting when I'm working as a sawyer. Uh, this is what I use for pounding wedges. Um, guys make fun of me like, what's that little thing? Like, oh, you do what you want. This is what I like. But the small forest axe uh, is excellent. Graduating up, the one that I use not quite as often, but I, I, I love it just as much. This is the next one up. This is the Scandinavian uh, forest axe, and it's quite a bit bigger. Uh, now you're getting into... This, now you're getting into a real camp making act, meaning that if you were to show up and with nothing done and you're starting from scratch, I mean, you could literally use this to build a log cabin. You can use this to split a cord of firewood. You can use this to take down trees 24 inches. Uh, it's, I've done it before. It's an excellent ax, but it starts getting a little bit big, a little heavy. It's not something that a guy wants to pack around too much. So what I have kind of found and what I've always kind of been wanting was something kind of in between if you were to like put these all in a pot you know and mix them up you know what, what, would, what would come out because what I was want is I want something that um, can basically take the place of these two essentially that's that's what it really what it comes down to I need something with a longer handle um, but something that I could still carve and work with by hand but some but but not so long I'm not throwing this in a pack the handle is too long it's just it's I've always been kind of wanting something right in the middle. Oh, this is, here's what we have. Let's just take it in here for a minute. Of course, every Grand Force Brooks axe comes with uh, their axe book. This one, uh, quite, quite charming, is all in Swedish. Uh, but these are excellent. It has a lot of um, how, to, how to hang handles, um, how to process and stack firewood, how to, how to uh, butcher game. It's a great little book um, that comes with all of their axes here. Okay, let's experience it here for the first time. Weight on this is about one pound, almost exactly one pound. It's probably about uh, 14 inches long. When I initially look at it, it kind of reminds me of a, it reminds me of a tomahawk, very similar to a tomahawk in that um, the way that that blade curves down to the top. It's also very similar to it's like a, a tiny version of the um, Collins uh, Legitimus, which is one of their most iconic axes, but it has that shape, but even more so kind of almost a bearded shape right there. This is really cool. This is a steel collar, and I, I can't even see the seam. I don't know if this is DOM material um, that they have shaped to put on here, but it's very nicely done. I've never seen this on a small forest axe. I've only seen it on their big splitters. And the reason what it's for is that uh, when you're splitting and if you were overstrike, um, that it protects that handle um, from from getting marred up. I've even done videos where I've attempted to make these myself with um, limited success, but this one being seamless is very nice. How interesting that they put that on a small forest axe. But if we look at it, it's clear why they did that. This is an axe that uh, would be just perfect, not for showing up with nothing, but let's say you had a camp established and you were going to work uh, to make all of your, maybe you're gonna make a chair or make a latrine or a shelter uh, or a pot hanger. This is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be a man's best friend right here. It almost, just the shape of it and the feel of it could replace, it could almost replace a knife. And I think that's what their intention was right here. If we look at the, I love that handle. I just love the handle, the shape of it. Do you see how it's swelled? We have a, a thickness here, the swell, a palm swell right there. You know, it's not unlike a, a really high quality knife. Do you see how it's right there, how it's got that belly in it? Well, that's, that's so you can hold on to it here. So it's not too narrow. 
so it's, 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 you've got a good purchase here because this has got such a good shape that you can do detail work with it. As I said, almost replace it as a knife. Now it's very comfortable. My, my knuckle right here tucks up underneath there. The way the blade dips down right there, it almost protects my hand and I have very nice control. I could do detailed work, even, even work towards myself. It's very, very comfortable. This is an excellent, excellent ax. Down here where it gets narrow, we, we go, uh, it kind of finishes it out to this beautiful palm swell uh, that's going to give us the ability. We can actually get two hands on this. We can get two hands on there if we go to the end and we can do some hard chopping with this. But more, more likely you're going to hold it in here and that palm swell keeps it, keeps it from f fatiguing your hand. Uh, you don't have to squeeze so hard when you are, are swinging it all day long that palm swell uh, gives you build keeps it from slipping out of your hand and just makes it much less fatigue and it just feels beautiful in the hand this is an axe that would be perfect for splitting kindling for chopping for building shelter oh it's just gorgeous just gorgeous grain orientation acceptable anything at a 45 some of you guys have bought these and, and were concerned that the grain pattern was at a 45 rather than uh, you know perpendicular with the blade reason for that is if the grain is running this way it's very weak the grain wants to peel apart imagine a, a lamination um, it wants to peel apart under stress where if it's oriented this way it's very very strong so the fact that it's at a 45 degree, I don't have an issue with that whatsoever. Uh, if it were at a 90, I would uh, take serious issue with that. But the fact that it's anywhere from here to here, I'm totally fine with. I don't care. Nicely done on the wedge. Look how they, I've even adopted this from my own handles that I make, how that they, this handle sticks up proud right here, about an eighth of an inch to a three sixteenths. I love that. I think it looks nice and it also gives you a really good swell at the top of the eye um, and less likely for it to come loose. One of the most charming things about their axes, I mean, is, is the asymmetry in them. You can see they are, it's a little dark there. Let me brighten this up a bit. That's going the wrong way. There we go. They are asymmetrical and there are no two alike because they are uh, individually made. Um, even the craftsmen who make them dismiss whatever you want to call them. And there's a lot of automation, but the machinery that they use is, is turn of the century. They are truly forged, uh, beautifully made axes. Each uh, guy will put his maker mark on there. I, will, I was looking at mine. Um, I have an, an LP, an EB, an MM. And my forest axe uh, is an AS. And you can go on their website and you can actually uh, get a profile of the man who made this tool, who made this axe head. Um, I think that that's beautiful. If I did any sort of manufacturing, I would institute the maker's mark. Uh, not only for pride of, uh, of, of, of making it, um, but also accountability. When a guy stamps his name onto something, um, you're going to put a little bit, bit more effort into it. You, you would be a little embarrassed if you would uh, stamp something that was substandard and your neighbor bought it and he came over and rattled your cage. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, what were you thinking? Did you make this on Friday afternoon? But I think that's charming. But this is a beautiful, beautiful axe. I think the weight and the size is the perfect spot and makes it more likely for me to take it uh, than the small forest axe. What I have done so many times is when I wanted to have an axe and I was using a backpack, I left this one behind because it, it was just too big. Uh, it's a little bit too heavy. You know, you're getting close to two pounds here. This is probably half the weight, but what a beautiful little axe that is. Isn't that nice? Man, oh man. I am absolutely in love. And on the flip side, this one here, I would take this sometimes, but I found it outside of just doing small things, splitting kindling, um, small crafty handiwork. Uh, it wasn't all that functional. I've never tried to take down a tree with it. It would be foolish to do so. But this one here, uh, it would be a, a way more feasible. Isn't that gorgeous?